Teaching Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Uh, following the, the many links that we sent out, I'm glad everyone could come back and join me. So uh, what we're going to be talking about today is Java performance tuning, and I'm actually hoping that this becomes uh, eventually maybe a series of different talks that we do. To start with, uh, with this first seminar, we're going to be focusing on the Java Standard Edition. Uh, and so let's, uh, let's move ahead into the agenda and see what we're going to do today. First of all, the slide that you've all been waiting for, you want to know what, all the stuff about me. Well, my name is Jason Shapiro. Um, my email address here, jshapiro at intertech.com. I encourage everyone to write that down right now. If you have questions that we're not able to get to or you have uh, any other good questions on the seminar that you didn't think of uh, during the seminar, please feel free to email me. Um, I'll definitely try to get back to you as soon as possible. Stan mentioned I'm an instructor and consultant here at Intertech, focused on the Java and the web classes such as Ajax. We have a Twitter account I, again, encourage everyone to write down, sign up for. You can find that at twitter.intertech.com. I've been uh, in the software industry for a little over 15 years professionally. Um, most of my experience has been working on business intelligence applications as well as web portal applications. I'm a Master of Science in Software Engineering, and I have completed many, many years ago the uh, SUN certifications for Java programmer and web component developer. Also, I have a great, uh, vast interest in Agile. So if anyone has any questions that has nothing to do with this presentation but on Agile, I encourage you to write to me on those topics as well. I'm more than happy to discuss those issues. So what are we going to do today? The agenda. We're going to start uh, for about 45 minutes is probably what I'll do. And after that point, we will take a 10 to 15 minute break and then resume the presentation. The specific points of what we're going to talk about is we're going to start as what is performance. Can't really talk about how we can tune performance if we don't really understand what performance is. We'll look at the different components that affect performance. Um, you know, a lot of times people want to jump right into their application and say, what's going wrong here? How can I make this perform better? But sometimes it's not our applications. So we'll look at the different components that may actually be affecting the performance of your overall user experience. Once we've identified these components, we'll want to make sure we hit some real quick hit, low-hanging fruit uh, items before you begin tuning, things that we should be doing. And in that segment, I'll also be talking about some of the uh, improvements in performance that uh, Java JDK 6 has given us. We'll talk about performance tuning as a life cycle. Now, this is kind of flexible. Uh, you know, you have to modify this for your project and your team and what you need. I'll give you a rough start, I guess, of what things that you should consider and what a life cycle in terms of performance tuning might look like. Talk a little bit about defining our requirements for performance and then measuring performance. These, th these two go hand in hand. Again, a lot of times we get very excited, like, hey, let's just try to find some areas of our code that aren't performing well. Well, if you don't define what your requirements are, how do you know that you're, in fact, needing to improve the uh, performance? So we'll define those requirements, and then we'll measure it. Once we've measured the performance, if we see that the performance is not up to snuff, at that point what we want to do is start to identify the bottlenecks. We'll talk about how we can do that. And then we'll talk about a tool that is free, available to everyone on this call. It's called Visual VM. It's a free open source software uh, that was based on NetBeans Profiler. And I'll show you how you can get a hold of that. And I bet many of you already have this software, even if you don't realize that you do. After we look through uh, Visual VM, I'll go through all the different screens and what the different tabs and options are and what you can do with vis Visual VM. And then we'll consider what those tabs and things do in terms of implementing performance enhancements. At that point, I'll do three very short performance tuning demonstrations. Now, when we get to that segment, um, admittedly, they're going to be fairly trivial because what I want to do is just make sure you understand when you see X, Y, and Z in Visual VM, it means 
it's, you know, specific things. So we'll be looking at things like uh, uh, out-of-memory errors. We'll be generating deadlocks, and we'll be generating uh, just code that uh, runs slowly. And at the end, we'll just talk about a few couple of additional best practices. So to begin with, what is uh, performance? So let's define performance. Um, performance is really it affects a lot of different areas of your application. For example, startup time might be important. Uh, when I am distributing an application to a client and they double click on my icon, how long does it take for that application to load? In addition, if we have, say, a web application and the web application is hit, how long does it take for, say, a JSP to be uh, compiled and turned into a servlet and sent back to the user? Those kind of things, the startup time, um, affect uh, perceived and actual performance. The response time, how long does it take for a system to react to a user's request? This may or may not be as important as throughput. So sometimes that's one of the decisions you have to make with your application in terms of defining your requirements and in defining how you're going to tune your application. So what's more important? Should the system quickly react to a user's request, or is it much more important that we get a lot of data sent through the system through a given amount of time? Hardware requirements, how many processors are needed, how much RAM is needed for your application. And all of these are aspects of performance that need to be defined and measured. And finally, scalability. So how does a different load on the system actually affect the response time, the throughput, and your hardware requirements? So a lot of these are actual performance issues, but some of these are tied to what's known as perceived performance issues, meaning that I may come up with a requirement that says, you know, users don't like an application to take, you know, two minutes to start up. However, I might be able to change how that uh, user experience goes by having maybe a loading icon um, or some status bar or some other kind of splash screen that will um, – make people a little bit more patient as they're waiting for the application to start. So that's known as a perceived performance issue. And so some of those you can just fix by simply providing more information to the user. So never underestimate perceived performance issues. So what kind of components will affect performance? Again, these are things that you want to consider before you jump into your code. Check out your CPU. If you're on a Windows system, you know, you can go to your task manager and take a look at what processes are running and what's really monopolizing the CPU on your, um, on your box. Make sure that others are not monopolizing your CPU time. Make sure that your program is really um, taking up the bulk of your uh, CPU usage. Um, things that will affect performance definitely are single versus parallel processing. So more CPUs can definitely be better and uh, greatly impact in a positive way the uh, performance of your application. So again, rule out CPU as being a bottleneck. Input and output. So any kind of input and output, whether it's I'm reading or writing to the file system, if I'm making a connection to a database, waiting on some queries to be run, any kind of a network data store, such as a uh, web service, for example, all of those are not necessarily your application. So you need to, again, isolate, you know, when is your code running and when is your code sort of hands off and waiting for some information to come back. Also, native method calls. So if you're using any sort of uh, APIs that are making low-level calls to the operating system for uh, graphic operations, um, they're probably making some native method calls, even if you are not making the native method calls directly yourself. So again, first thing that you want to do when you're considering performance is make sure you are identifying where the real bottleneck is. Check all these areas out before you move on to optimizing your JVM or your application. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.